Hey everybody, today we have an Optima HD20 to look at. This particular projector was sent in because somebody bought a new lamp. They went to put it in and they were still experiencing the same symptoms as they were with the old lamp. So they are local and they decided to bring the whole setup by so that I could take a look at it. This is an old OEM of theirs that they don't need and they're just letting me keep the old ones for parts or you know whatever. So figured I'd show you guys this is the new lamp here. And here's the uh, the original or one of the originals. So let's put that all off to the side and before we plug it in to see what's going on. Ooh. That doesn't sound good. What just fell out? Piece of quartz it looks like or was that plastic? It's an older projector, but these are still quite good, and they're still pretty popular on eBay. I have one. It's a, it's a decent projector. I don't currently use it, but still a good one. All right, so there's no lamp. Ah, oh, and there's a piece of foam. There was somebody that had asked me about the foam inside here, and when I looked inside mine, I didn't see it, so I suspect it fell out on mine. But that piece right there, hopefully you can see that. There's the foam. And I don't know why you'd need that, really. It would just kind of see that goes in like that. So, yeah, it would just kind of push on there. So, who knows? Maybe to help direct. Oh, I'll bet it's to help direct air. I'll bet you that's what it's for. Because when that's in, there's air blown in here by the blower fan. You can see the that silver piece right there. That has all the vent directional pieces on it to make sure the air cools the uh, tip of the arc tube there properly. Then the hot air, or the exhausted air, comes out through this little vent. That's rubber, but through that little gap right there, and then through that large, you know, screen right there. And then there's a second fan right here. You can see it, that fan right there, the dusty one. And that's supposed to force the uh, air that way so that all the heat comes out. So I suspect we're going to find a lot of dirt or dust just by what I can see on that one fan, but we'll see for sure. I'm going to take the lens cap off, get that out of the way, and because I know these screws can be temperamental, that one's missing, that one's missing. All right, so we only have one. So somebody's had the screw out. Oh, he had it apart. That's right, because I have a note that he damaged the uh, cable from the keyboard to the main board. Then that just I think this just pulls off. Come on. There we go. Yeah. So that just pulls off. Oh, there's uh, something going on there. We'll take a look at that. The uh, focus stop is not quite grabbing. We got the whole thing coming out, so I'll fix that too. I hear metal flopping about. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right. So there's the keyboard. There's the wire. Oh, what we heard was... That's the red segment of the color wheel. Piece of foam to set that all on. There's probably more pieces. This is what I expected to find. And sure enough... There's a whole bunch of segments missing from the color wheel. And they're probably all inside. Yeah. And then the stop. 
that's the stop for the focus that's an easy fix i'll just glue that back on that's no problem just put that in all the way and then sure enough that's see if you can see that right there so it has what the blue looks like it's got the blue segment left and whatever piece that is so there's probably a bunch of glass in here but let's take the color wheel out and look at it up close so we'll disconnect the index wire and then oh he didn't even break that connector all right and then the drive wire for it the uh this little ziff connector here is where the uh, wire goes and he must not have known how to plug it back in no worries oh. so to take that out there is two screws here and there so and these are pretty available i think i found one on uh, ebay for about 40 bucks yeah, we still have the, I guess that's the blue segment, even though it looks yellow at the moment. Yeah, so there's blue, there's green, red came out. What happens, pardon me, what happens is these are glued on one side. You can see the glue there. It's glued in there like that. And over time, when these get too hot, it makes the uh, the brass swell and then when it cools down it shrinks and then it breaks the glue loose and then the RPMs just throw these out everywhere let's take that shield off the front because when I put the new one in I need that out of the way That's what's left of the wheel. So we'll take these, loosen these three. We can be ready for the new color wheel. So I have not ordered it yet because I wanted to confirm that that's what the problem was, and it is. So I will be contacting the customer and seeing if uh, they want to proceed um, I know this is an older projector, and it's kind of on the cusp of if it's worth it or not, but I think for maybe $100, $150, <clears throat> $150, it would be worth it, especially since the cause was more or less lack of maintenance. You can see dust build up there. The blower fan, let's get that in view here. There it is. You can see the dust in there. It's just very dusty. Want to get the rest of that glass out. Oh, it looks like you had a lamp burst at one point, too. And there's a piece of quartz. So, I'm not going to clean it right yet. All I'm going to do is get the uh, parts list together and then figure out how to go from there or uh, contact him and then see how he wants to go. And then we'll proceed from there. So stay tuned for part two uh, when we put the new color wheel in and possibly need to set its index mark. I haven't had to go into the service menu on a projector in a while, but kind of hoping I'll have an excuse then. Hey everybody, welcome back to the second part of cleaning and repairing this HD20. Uh, we're going to put a new color wheel in it. The old color wheel spun its last spin if you uh, watched part one you saw this but if you haven't that's what was left of the color wheel some shards a loose blue segment so time for a new one the new one arrived that's it right here it's about 30 bucks pretty cheap really it's a good value so before we put it in we need to look at cleaning it the inside of the projector has a lot of dust buildup. 
you know, from its years being used. The uh, lamp blower fan in particular, which you can almost see. There you are. Let's see, this guy, this one right here, that fan, you can see all that dust on there. Those blades are kind of like airfoils. So what happens is when that dust builds up, it doesn't move the air as efficiently. And that blows the air through here, out of that vent. And once it come out, once it comes out of that vent, it blows into the lamp. So if there's not enough air coming out of that, it won't keep the lamp cool, and then your lamps go bad early. Another thing to know, if you're cleaning or working on one of these, there's a piece of foam. This will sometimes fall out. If it does, it's not critical that it goes back in. It will run without it, but that does help direct the uh, air a little better. So you do want it, but if it falls out and it's all, you know, not good looking, you don't have to put it back in. But like I said, if you can, that's better. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to move everything over to the cleaning area. So sit tight and we'll be right back. Normally I don't show this part. So usually, since I, uh, I don't usually show this part because it's, I kind of figure it's self-explanatory, but a couple people have pointed out that no, it's not, and they're entirely right. I shouldn't assume that it's that obvious, because if you don't work on these, you're just not going to know what to look for. So what we're doing here is the goal, the goal, how am I going to use my words? Um, the goal here is to get all the dust out. Dust builds up on the heat sink for the ballast, it builds up on the heat sink for the DMD, you can see it down in there, and the dust causes heat to stay inside, and heat is your biggest, uh, biggest problem with a projector, that's what kills them the fastest, wears out your lamps the fastest. Now there's a couple ways we can clean them. We can tear it all the way down, which I did think about. Uh, removing the main board, pulling the uh, optic assembly out. But over the years, I've come to learn that less is more. Uh, you don't want to take it apart unless you absolutely positively have to. Every time you unplug a wire, every time you remove a screw, there's a chance that you could damage something. Your screwdriver could slip, rip a trace unplugging a wire. These connectors have been sitting this way for a long time. The plastic can crack. Uh, wires can pull out. It's just less is more. Uh, it really is the case here. Now, if it was packed, if there was just piles of dust, sure. And if after I clean it, I find that there's little specks showing up, then I will tear it down. But why do more work if we don't have to? So let's not. Let me get the air gun. And I have, this is really what I use, but I do have a regulator connected that keeps the air pressure much lower. Uh, I usually set it about 10, 15 PSI. More than that, uh, you could take the chance of knocking optics loose. If the glue is at all questionable and the light tunnel can knock those segments loose, you can also blow dust into areas you don't want it. So I try to essentially like a strong, um, just a strong airflow without too much. I know that's kind of subjective, but I've kind of found over the years that I don't know, 10 to 15 PSI, no more than 20. 20 is even pushing it, but about 10 to 15 PSI tends to work. And since this particular nozzle doesn't have a holes in the side, just the air is coming out here. It's not pulling air in. And it's really simple. I have uh, a window open, so I'll just... You can see the dust coming out. And I just kind of go back and forth pushing it one direction. 
because I want the dust to come up and then away. So sometimes what I'll do if I see a big pile is I will make it come up and then keep the air going to force it away. And I can't do that while I'm talking, so I will demonstrate. See? And we want to get the fans. So we're going to get that blower fan. So I'm going to put the nozzle actually into the vent. You can hear that fan. And that's the other reason I don't go above about 15 PSI. If you make the fan spin too fast, it'll actually fly apart from centrifugal force. noisy but that fan already looks a lot better if you can see down in there I'll zoom in once we get back to the bench trick is to get it loose and then up in the air and then you can blow it away so that's why you see me kind of going around to different areas you can use air duster for this but you have to be really careful air duster when you hold the can up the right way is fine it's dry air but if you invert the can or tilt it and any of the liquid gets into the tube, it acts like freeze spray and you can really cause some damage. So try to stick with compressed air or even do it by hand. Just use a vacuum and a paintbrush and you can knock dust loose with the paintbrush and the vacuum will pull it in. So this is looking pretty good. I don't see any more. A little bit there. See, I want to make sure I get the uh, get that DMD heat sink well. If that's dusty, that'll shorten the life of the DMD and bring on the little um, stuck pixels faster. That should do it. All the surface dust is gone. There's a little bit on the fan blades, but it's not too bad. These are designed to run with a small amount of dust. You know, they have to. You can't keep them 100% clean all the time. It's just not realistic. This uh, muffler will maybe cap on, tape that back on. That covers up that hole to help keep uh, noise down. So, yeah, this looks good. I, uh, I'm ready to put that color wheel in now. Let's head back over to the bench. Now we're back at the bench. I uh, clean the top at the same time, so the top's ready to go back on. But we're not there yet because we still need to put Mr. Color Wheel in. And the one concern I do have that I guess really doesn't matter at this point is the index mark location on the new one i don't know where it's supposed to be because all the segments broke off so i'm not going to worry about that we'll put it in we'll fire it up and if the uh, colors are off then we will adjust the index mark setting and the service menu hopefully you don't have to do that because i think everybody should be able to do this without having to worry about things like service menu index mark settings so there's the new color wheel. Let me get the bracket. So this is the bracket. That's what the color wheel gets attached to. Get our get our screwdrivers ready. 
And then we have the mask that goes on the front to help block the light. Oh, that's got some dust on it. Let me uh, get a wipe ready. I actually might change my gloves. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, no, they're all right. They're not dusty. It'll be all right. Don't want fingerprints on the new color wheel. There's the new wheel. It looks good. Good shape. And on this one, they have the index mark. Let's see, in front of that blue segment, which might be right. We'll use that foam to work on it. If I remember correctly, it's this way because the wire then sticks up. And now, remember, you don't want to put any pressure. Just let the screws do the job or keep your finger on the hub so that if you do put any pressure, you're not putting any pressure on the segments. See, this is just resting on the hub. None of the segments are touching the foam. And these screws will bottom out pretty obviously. And once they do just a little more, then they're locked in. And that is almost ready to go back in. Now we just have to put the uh, that mask on that blocks the extra light from the sensor. The uh, index mark sensor is this black wire here and infrared light can confuse it. It's one of the problems with the cheap lamps on Amazon is they don't have a good UV or a good IR filter. So I'm going to put this shield on. This will protect, it helps block light from getting into the UV sensor because the light is only shining through so I have this right yeah shining through here so let's move the foam out of the way then I'm just going to set it in and line it up on its pins should be yep just like that pretty straightforward color wheels are one of the easiest repairs in most projectors Besides a lamp. I guess it's the easiest non-lamp repair in a DLP projector. Alright. First screw. And now the second screw. Which goes there. The wire was blocking the view. Again, just bring them down until they stop. And then just a tiny bit more. So. We'll feed it underneath, bring it through, this would be so much easier without gloves on, but I don't want to take the chance and get dirt on something or, you know, Projectors are need too much to stay clean. Let's keep them clean. And then I'm just going to tuck that wire down underneath so it's out of the way. There we are. It's not near any fans. I'm happy with that. Let's have the color wheels in. Yep, not dragging on anything, that's good. So it's technically ready for testing. Let me get the lamp. Let's pop the lamp in and let's see how the uh, see how it does. There's the new lamp. Here is the old lamp. Good coating. I like it. Good lamp. 
So this is an original from Optima and this is a replacement. Tell me what the difference is besides the screw colors, because there isn't any. It's a good lamp. Both use an Osram 230.8, E20.8, but this one's dirty. If you ever take your lamp out and you see like dust like that building up, get in there and clean your projector before you put the new one in. This is, uh, this is a lot. And if you see this uh, this discoloration here, that is from the heat buildup. I don't know. It's not very obvious on the reflector, but you can kind of see. Well, you can see there where it got hot, and that's because it wasn't being cooled well. That lamp still works, believe it or not, just not very well. But we're going to put the new one in because that one will work well. And to put it in, just like taking it out, you, uh, come on, just drop it in, and then put the screws in, and as always with lamps, never put these in real tight, just bring them down till they stop and that's it. So just till they stop, because if you put them in tight, if they get hot, they can kind of fuse themselves to the threads and they'll never come out. Then we need to put the lamp door on because that tab goes through here and hits a switch that tells it that the lamp is installed. Hear that clicking? Well, you're hearing all the screws, but that noise, that's the switch. And then same thing with the lamp cover screws. Don't tighten the heck out of them, just bring them down until they stop. Now the cover, let's see, how do I want to, I was thinking of taking the, I want to show you guys without the cover on, so give me a moment, I'm going to disconnect the keyboard from the uh, front panel so that we can watch this thing start up without, you know, I don't want to start it up with just that. So let me take those screws out. All right, so I disconnected the, uh, the keyboard. Still a little bit of dust between those buttons. And let's plug in the keyboard keyboard plugs into this connector. Again, blue side up because the contacts are down. Now, if you're doing your own projector or a projector for somebody, you don't necessarily need to pull this out. You can if you want, if you want to test it with the top off. Uh, but if you do that, I would recommend, even though it's kind of insulated, I'd put something under it like that just so it's truly definitely 100% insulated. So let's power. We have standby. That's good. Let's, uh, let me see. Let me spin it this way so that you can actually hopefully see the color wheel spin up. Good sign. Color wheel spun up, lamp come, came on, because that's step one. Next, we should get some fans. The uh, blower fan has not started spinning yet. Huh. It's not spinning. Why is that not spinning? See that? Oh, there we go. It must take a moment, but that blower fan didn't come on when I expected it to. Now let's see what we got image-wise. All right, there's the picture. Let's get her focused. There we are. And let's see, menu. All right, so far they look good. Let's see, test pattern. Okay. And that wobbling you see is the uh, 
the DLP uh, not being in sync with the camera, so don't worry about that. White looks good. It is white. Let's see if I can make it white for you guys. See? It'll be white real quick until everything goes out of sync. But that's a good sign. That means, oh, but I do see something on the side here. Right there, you see that? That's the light tunnel. I wonder if that shifted. Let me get a uh, screwdriver here. And which screw? Let's go to this one. more hmm. all right so I know what the colors going by it's not quite as obvious but right here it's still showing up so we're going to, have to go in a little deeper let me shut it down and let's see why the light tunnel is doing that Okay, so the it's cooled down. Disconnect the keyboard. Get our screw bin ready. And get ready to start taking screws out. We need to get to the light tunnel area. So let's get the shield off. I hope I didn't cause that. I don't think I did, but you never know. No, actually, I didn't need to take out. Don't need to take out those two. That one. Yep. And then on this side, uh, down here. See that screw down there? That one. I want to disconnect as little as possible. This one does have to come out. And there's a metal bracket that's going to disconnect from the assembly and then I should be able to lift the main board up and kind of shift it over. I don't want to take it out out. I just want to take the optic block out. We do have to disconnect the color wheel again. that out and then this whole thing should just kind of now let's unplug the front IR too just to make it easier so we'll just set the main board back out of the way because this is what we're taking out oh there's the power supply and ballast is over here obviously so this should only be three screws, if I remember correctly. There's a fourth screw. I always forget about this one. Right here, there's a fourth screw. So four screws holding the optic block in. And if... Alright, so the problem in our case... I just found an arc point. Oh, and a bunch of glass. Wow. All right, so the issue, I can almost see it. It's down in here. It's in that, that tunnel there. I'm going to take the color wheel back off so that it doesn't get damaged, and it'll give us a clearer view of the light tunnel. And then what I might do is just pop the light tunnel out, make sure it's assembled right, you know, the segments have slipped, and then we'll just readjust it.
So the first thing I'm going to do is loosen these a little bit so that they're not putting any stress on the springs. So I don't want this to come launching out when I take the screws out. So I will let's see. All right, so this one holds the mask on the front. It's kind of like a, a heat sink of sorts. That here keeps the uh, light from hitting, oh, there we are, from hitting those segments wrong. I'm kind of wondering if that mask was bent. We'll check it. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking it all apart, checking it, and putting it all back together. Hopefully I don't have to actually repair anything. Oh, no, these segments are a little loose. See? So that means they do need a little bit of glue. You can oh, focus. There's glue in there that's broken loose from heat. And it's letting that segment slip and a piece of glue just fell onto the table. Let's see if I can see that little, oh, come on, it's a little orange. Now you can't really see it, but it's the same color as that stuff. So the light tunnel does need a little bit of work. It's not terrible, fortunately. The segments didn't all fall loose yet, but that needs to be dealt with. All right, I hope I don't regret doing this. It looks like the glue is holding okay so far. Because so I want to slide this out and clean the old glue off the housing. But I don't want these segments to come apart. You see the, whoops, you see the corners? Those are glued to make it into that box shape. And those are all first surface mirrors, mirror coatings on the front there. So I want to pull this out. There we go. If I grab it evenly, I should be okay. But even a little too much stress, these will just collapse. And these are a pain to put back together. I actually have a jig that I made years ago. But even with the jig, it's a pain. So really, what I want to do here is just chip the old glue out because that'll be ready for the new glue and the reason this happened is heat all that dust held the heat inside well an age too but mostly heat so we'll put some glue on here once we slide that back in I'm even going to just a little bit bend it down, just so it's barely below the surface. That'll help pinch it a little. Because right now when I tighten the screws down, it's not, you know, setting it anywhere. And then we're going to put it back in the same way it came out. Make sure I have the right... Yeah, they're going to be on there. Yep. Like that. Oh, this is going to be fun to edit. So that goes like that. Now let me get some glue. That should do it. It doesn't need much, but now it just has to set up. Oh, come on, let it go back on. There we go. So I 
put it to the bottom and to the side. Piece of lint. Just make sure. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. All I'm doing here is just making sure it's down and over where I want it. Now I gotta let this dry. So let me find something I can set this in so it won't get glued to itself. Let's see, what do I have? Another color wheel or a light tunnel? We'll use that. I'm just gonna set it. Just kind of set it on there. I'll let it sit for about 10 minutes or so and then we should be able to put it back in. And I'm back. It's been 10 minutes. I still can't quite hold it in frame. I don't know what's wrong with me there. But it is now glued in place. It's not shifting. Get that other light tunnel out of the way. And let's get the optic block back over here. Now, this side went that way. Like that. No. Like that. There we go. I had it right the first time. Because that spring pushes on that. And from the looks of this, the screws are pushing in a little bit. There we go. You get the idea. So now when I tighten the screws, it will shift the entire assembly around instead of, well, there, I guess it really wasn't moving much of anything. Then we have to put this back on. That goes there. And then this screw, and then we can put this back into the projector. We'll fire it up and see about aligning it. The uh, This screw is gonna be difficult because it's pointing back, so I might have to get in there with a the right angle or a pair of pliers maybe and grab it and twist it. But we'll see. It's going to be totally out of position. And let's look at the heat sink while we're at it. See how clean that is? Getting all that dust out was very helpful. And you know what? While I'm in here, let's just let's pop the uh, blower fan out and make sure it's really clean. Sometimes I'll tear projectors down all the way like this to clean them because it's nice when you can get in that far then you can get dust off things like the, the you know the rubber boot that holds it that won't cause you much operational problem but it's nice to get it all clean there's a view of the blades so i'm gonna go hit this with the air real quick and we can put it back Much better. I did not put the color wheel back on yet. So we'll get everything back in a position.
let's get the color wheel. After this, we will set the main board back in position, plug the wires back in, and then we'll see where we are. All right, I'm gonna put the rest of the screws back in and then I'll be back. short screws, long screws, just wanted to show you, so the short ones are going to go here. Now these, I'm going to leave a little loose until they're all in and then I'll tighten them up at once. And that should do it, that's all of them. So now I can tighten these down. Now, let's get, I need to get into here, I need to get on this one and this one. I don't know if I can, maybe, maybe a flathead, I'll get it to turn, yeah, it might work. Now we'll see what happens. All right, that looks good. Let's... I can see some shadow on the side. There we are, that's what I'm looking for. And let's see what that front one does because it looks like top and bottom are okay. So that's top and bottom. So I have to try. There we go. 
hopefully my arm wasn't in the way, but I uh, just kind of went in on an angle and was able to tweak it enough. That is good. Let's get it straight. So you can see it's nice and even. That uh, light tunnel is now in good shape. There's the uh, test pattern, the cross hatch. I don't see anything wrong there. Uh, yeah, I like this. Let's get out of the menu. Let's turn it off. And let's get the top put back on. And just to show you all, I did put some captain tape on here to help hold that back together. And I might put some here. This is kind of staying, and once the cover's on, it really won't matter. But see, that's really close to the tops. So that might be difficult to get the tape on correctly. So I may just leave that alone. But that one I definitely wanted to tape up. All right, so I snapped the top on. And the good screw, I think, was this corner. Let's see if that's the case, because there's only one screw going in this. I think it was this corner. Feels like it. Let's see if I'm right. It's gonna stop. No. No, it's not this one. Darn, I was wrong. been the other side. Let's uh, pop that screw out. I knew it was one of these corners. I mean, I have a 30%, 33% chance of getting it right. It was that one. Then, let's put the, pardon me. Let's put the lens, the just, you know, the focus ring. Ooh, I should hit that with some air. Much better. Then I'm just going to clip it back on. So we'll line those up. Set straight, yeah, that's good. And then, where is it? Here we are, the lens cap. Now, on my projectors, I tend to take these off. Unless it's ceiling mounted, then I'll just kind of stuff it up there and hide it. on there. There we go. That is ready. Spray it down and wipe it down. And just so you all know, that is what I'm spraying is pure anhydrous alcohol. There's no water in it. So even if I were just to leave it sitting there, it would evaporate. So it won't... Um, will not damage uh, the electronics or the optics if I spray it directly on there. If I were using cleaner, you know, Windex or 409 or something like that, I would spray it on the towel. In fact, I may just do that in the future so people don't get confused. You know, I'll do that. With this stuff, it, like I said, it really doesn't matter, but just to prevent anybody from thinking I'm spraying water-based cleaner directly on this. All right, so I am happy with this. I'm sure the customer will be too. He put his old color wheel and 
bits of color wheel in the bag so I can give it back. I don't keep people's parts because they're not mine. Unless they tell me to keep them. I don't keep them. So yeah, now we have a, another working Optima HD20 to keep out of the waste stream. It's one of the reasons I like to do this is to keep electronic trash out of the ground. It's good for everybody. And plus it's fun to fix and why not save yourself some money. Um, this cost the guy, I don't know, about 150 total. Uh, the cleaning, the color wheel, you know, it's, it's not a bad deal really. He had already put a new lamp in, so why trash the projector if we only need to put a new color wheel in? And now this color wheel will probably lasts another 10 years or so. So if you have any questions about your Optima um, or any DLP projector in general, put it down in the comments. And uh, if you don't subscribe, think about it. If you do subscribe, I appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching.